Welcome to our channel. A small American town in the 1970s is at the center of attention for media, adventurers, curious minds, and brave mystery hunters. They flock here in crowds, all eager to catch a glimpse of the hideous three-legged monster that attacked a young boy, terrified a man from the neighboring house, and miraculously withstood the bullets fired at it. In today's video, we'll talk about this mysterious and terrifying creature. But before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get started. When the horror of Enfield is mentioned, avid mystery lovers recall the case of the poltergeist that plagued a family in British Enfield from 1977 to 1979. However, in this case, we're referring to a different event in a different location. The residents of a town also called Enfield, located in the American state of Illinois, were horrified in 1973 by the sighting of a terrifying and seemingly dangerous monster. This monster turned life in the small, peaceful rural community upside down, transforming Enfield into a target destination for mystery enthusiasts and hunters longing for a unique trophy. The three-legged beast whose body is so deformed that it cannot be likened to any known animal or object. Some of them reportedly came face to face with this creature, almost within reach of the trophy. What exactly was surviving in the forests around Enfield? And where did the monster disappear to afterward? All this takes place in an area that has had a bad reputation since ancient times. Native Americans and the first European settlers have been declaring for centuries that a variety of strange phenomena occur in the southern part of the state of Illinois, where Enfield is also located. It is said to be fertile ground for observing strange orbs of light, shadowy apparitions, or terrifying entities inhabiting the local forests. Indigenous tribes in this area believed it to be a cursed place under the influence of evil spirits. The area is so renowned for paranormal activity that it has been dubbed Devil's Kitchen. Both the original inhabitants of North America and the newly arriving settlers usually avoided these parts. It was simply a mysterious cursed land of ghosts and apparitions, where only a madman would want to live. Even in the 70s of the last century, this area was not densely populated. Enfield was just a small rural community where days passed by at a lazy pace, and extraordinary events rarely occurred. This peaceful and monotonous life of the residents in Enfield was disturbed by a sinister creature that suddenly emerged, attacked, and terrorized the entire community. Was it perhaps one of the many local apparitions that the Native Americans sought to avoid? The terrifying story begins to unfold on the evening of April 25, 1973. The Garrett couple is sitting in their living room watching television when their 10-year-old son Greg bursts into the room. He had been playing in the backyard behind the house. He is hysterical, crying, and frantically recounts that while he was playing, a deformed, hideous creature emerged from the darkness and attacked him. According to the boy, it was something indescribably hideous. It measured about 150 centimeters, had three legs, short, thick arms ending in terrifying claws, gray skin covered in slime, and disproportionately large red eyes. The monster then approached the boy, reportedly even stepping on his foot and tearing his shoe with its claws. The boy, petrified with fear, fortunately managed to break free and run away. His parents immediately alerted the police, who promptly sent a patrol to the house. The officers searched the garden and surrounding area, but found no traces of the deformed creature described by the boy. Could the boy have made it all up? The whole thing would probably have been closed with the explanation that the boy had been frightened by some ordinary animal, which his scared mind had exaggerated into monstrous shapes. However, the same beast appeared half an hour later in the backyard of the neighboring house. The Garrett's neighbor, Henry McDaniels, is awakened by his own children, claiming they hear something scratching on the outside of the house. When he goes to investigate the situation, he indeed hears strange scratching sounds. Initially, he thinks it must be some kind of animal, perhaps a stray dog, cat, or raccoon. Nothing he couldn't scare away. So he opens the door to the veranda, but instead of a small predator, he is confronted with what little Greg saw half an hour ago. It had three legs, a short body, two small short arms coming from the chest area, and two pink eyes as big as headlights. It was four and a half footsteps tall and was grayish in color. It was trying to get into the house. 
McDaniels later describes to authorities. Could he have been mistaken as well? Or did something truly bizarre appear in Enfield that day? After McDaniel spots the source of the scratching sounds, he immediately slams the door shut again and rushes to grab a pistol, which, like many other Americans, he keeps in the house for potential protection. Armed with a loaded weapon, he slowly reopens the door and the creature is still there, scratching at the wall. When it notices McDaniel at the door, it hisses at him like a wild cat, and in return, he frantically fires several bullets, which hit the creature but evidently do not harm it, only drive it away. The creature takes off, allegedly covers a distance of almost 25 meters in three big jumps, and disappears into the darkness. After this incident, McDaniel calls the police, informing them that he saw a space monster. The officers search the surroundings of the house and the house itself once again. This time, they are more successful. On the exterior wall of the house, they find long scratches resembling claw marks supporting the claim that some animal was attempting to get inside. Near the house, they also find a series of strange tracks. The prints measure about 10 centimeters across and resemble those of a dog, but instead of the usual four toes, these tracks have six. Moreover, based on their layout, they really do appear to have been created by some three-legged animal. But what kind? Regardless of what McDaniel fired at, it's certain that he didn't kill the creature. He could confirm this with his own eyes several days later. Early in the morning, sometime around 3 a.m. on May 6th of the same year, McDaniel is awakened by the excited barking of the neighbor's dog. He looks out the window to see what the commotion is about, and in the next moment, he's staring again at the three-legged monster, reportedly strolling by the nearby railway tracks. This time, he doesn't shoot at it, just watches in astonishment as the creature walks around the tracks for several minutes before disappearing into the darkness again. It doesn't take long for the story of the bizarre monster to spread further into the world. Local authorities, despite the tracks and other evidence found, are relatively skeptical of McDaniel's testimony. And when the peaceful community begins to attract media attention and visitors from outside, the man receives a stern warning from the sheriff to keep quiet and stop spreading his wild stories to the world. Is the police trying to cover up the fact that some kind of monster is roaming their jurisdiction? Or do they truly not believe the reported testimonies? Enfield is temporarily flooded with those who seek the truth. McDaniel boldly declares to reporters, if they find one, they'll find more, and they won't be from this planet, I'm telling you. Where else could such a hideous monster come from if not from there? Crowds of curious onlookers, reporters, and hunters flock to Enfield in the hope of catching a glimpse of the terrifying creature, if only for a moment. And reportedly, a few of them succeed. But before they can pull the trigger of their rifle or camera, the creature vanishes. It moves faster than any human, they say. On one such occasion, however, at least the vocalizations of the monster were recorded, which sounded like agonizing howls. The strange events are subsequently investigated by American cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman, who writes in an article from July 1974, I traveled to Enfield, listened to witnesses, inspected the house claddings damaged by the Enfield monster, heard some strange squeaking sounds similar to a banshee, and left confused. While Coleman is uncertain, many cryptozoologists admit that it could all be a hoax orchestrated by McDaniel himself. But how could he have pulled it off? What do you think? Could this monster from Enfield really exist? That's all from us for today. If you're interested in videos filled with mysterious mysteries, dark stories, legends, or monsters, and you crave more, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any new videos.